put your feet together, and we always start karate class the same way. We start at detention stance. Good evening. My name is Sensei Chris Bagliri, and I'd like to welcome you to Evolve Arts Online. This is our first YouTube streamed workout, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the workout. These workouts are going to be specifically designed for brand new karate students. So we are going to start from the beginning, and we're going to learn one step at a time. In karate class, we start off by bringing our focus to one point. So we're gonna stand at attention, sort of like a soldier standing up straight, but not so strong. Instead, gently pressing our hands against the side of our body, feet together, standing up straight and making eye contact, looking at your computer screen. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna recite the student code. It goes like this. I say student code, and you repeat those words back to me. Good. Then we're going to say each word. I'll say it first. Respect, integrity, perseverance, discipline, pride. Now we're going to bow. In Japanese karate, a bow, and in many other cultures, a bow is a way of saying hello. But in karate, it's also saying, I'm ready to begin. So my body is under control. I'm standing at attention. I'm going to make a fist with my right hand. I'm going to make a flat hand with my left hand. I'm going to put them together in front of my body so they make this triangle shape. So we got a fist, and a flat hand, and parents, you don't need to correct this. Just let kids kind of figure it out for now. I'm going to move a lot closer so you can see what I'm doing with my hands. Good. And I hold my fist in my other hand right in front of my chest, and I bow from the waist, and we're ready to begin. Now we're going to get our bodies warmed up a little bit. Stay in the same spot but get your body jogging. Excellent. So my feet are moving. If you, can, if you look at the screen, you can see my feet are coming up off the floor. And that's what I want you to start with. Pick them up just a little bit higher. And we're gonna run a little bit faster. You can use your arms for energy, like running a race. Excellent. Fantastic. Okay, hopefully we're all following along, but now I want you to kick your feet behind you. So kick yourself in the behind. I know, that's kind of silly. Excellent. Now I'm going to slow down and march by picking your knees up nice and high. So some of the students, Sangram and Trevor, probably know this. We call it marching in place, picking your knees up. But there's something missing, right? What we need to do is hold our hands out front and bring each knee up to touch your hand. Don't bring your hand down. Knee up. Bring your other knee up. Other knee up. Other knee up. Now we're going to count them. One, two, we can count out loud. Three, four, five, six, seven, one more, eight. Good. Now we're going to start learning some karate words. Put your feet together and your hands by your side the same way we started class. This is called attention stance or standing at attention. But I say attention stance. Good. Now what I want you to do is bend your knees. Put your hands out away from your body a little bit for balance. Take a baby step forward, and I'm going to back up so you can see. Put your toe on the ground and sit on an imaginary chair. This is called cat stance. Now we're going to go back to bringing our knee up and balancing on one foot. I know it's hard for people to balance on one foot at first, so I'm going to give you some clues. Stare straight ahead at the computer because your eyes are going to help you balance. If you start to wobble, you can touch the ground with your toe and then come right back up to kicking stance. That's what this position is called. So toe on the ground, cat stance, knee in the air, kicking stance. You can say those words with me. Cat stance, kicking stance, and what was the other one? Attention stance. Let's try the other leg. So now I want you to take your left leg, and the parents should be aware at this point that I teach mirror image. So if your child follows whatever side of my body I'm using, and they put this foot in front, that should be their left foot. Hands up. But if they happen to be doing the wrong foot, we're not going to worry about it right now. Who remembers what this is called? Cat stance. With your hands up and away from your body. Now, you don't want to balance like this. I call this the airplane. We want our hands in front of our body, away from our chest, and like carrying a package or carrying something in front of us, that's how our arms help us balance. Kicking stance. Good job. Hold it. I know it's hard. Right about now, it gets a little bit a little wobbly. Sit on your imaginary chair. Then touch your toe down if you really start to lose your balance. 
and then pick it right back up and try again. Our student code has the word perseverance in it. That means when something's difficult, you don't want to quit, especially if it's the balancing on one foot. If you feel like it's starting to get hard, that's when you want to try a little harder. Perseverance. Good. Cat stance. Kicking stance. And back to where we started. Attention stance. Good job. We're going to stretch out a little bit. I want you to take both hands and touch the ceiling. When I do this, my hands go off the computer. Good. Now I want you to reach forward and show me your palms. Now show me your fingertips. Superman. Good. Try not to move your feet. So as you lean forward, you might feel like you're falling, but you're going to push your body back and hold your balance. Good. Let your arms hang, and they're going to help your body to get a little closer to the floor. I know it's hard to do this stretch and look to the computer, so listen to my voice. Reach towards your feet. Your feet. Take a breath. Reach a little lower. Reach towards your feet. Take a breath. Now, there's a thing that people do. Everybody look up for a second. I'm turning sideways so you can see me, but you don't need to turn sideways. Just face the computer. If you're bending your knees, that's not stretching. You actually need to push your knees back so your legs make this straight line and point at your toes. So everybody, again, facing the computer, pushing our knees back, pointing at our toes. Excellent. Now, if I bend my knees, that has a name. Bend your knees, touch the ground with your fingertips. We call this frog position. If you're not sure why, try touching the ground like this. So now my hands are inside my feet. Good. So why is it called frog position? I'll show you. Jump straight up and land. Frog position. Got it? Ready? One, two, three, jump. Excellent. For a little bit more exercise, try touching the ceiling while you're jumping. Ready? One, two, three, touch the ceiling. Touch the floor. Are you back or did you fall over? Try it again. One, two, three, jump. Excellent. One more time. One, two, three, jump. I fooled you. I didn't move. I'm sorry. One more time. Jump. Touch the floor. Good. Now put your hands flat on the floor. And what I want you to do is take your feet and stick them all the way out behind you. This is called bridge position. Now, the trick is, I know you're looking up at the computer, so this should be a little easier than usual. Come back to frog position. Fantastic. One more time. Hands down, feet out, bridge position. Holding your body up off the ground. I know this is hard. You can do it. Frog position. Bridge position. You can say the words. It helps to learn them. Frog position. Bridge position. Here's the hardest part. Try to hold your body stiff and straight and just bend your elbows a little bit. Then go back up to bridge position, back up to frog position, back up to attention stand. Good job. Give yourself a little shake. Take a deep breath. All right. We're going to start to continue the next part of karate class. You've got some more words to learn. We're going to learn a lot of words today. Maybe we should review some of the ones we know already. So say them with me. Attention stance. Cat stance. Toe on the ground, just your toe. Like I say in class sometimes, you're dipping your toes in the pool, up, but the water's too cold. And what's this? Kicking stance, good job. Attention stance. Now I want you to spread your feet out, but keep your toes pointing straight ahead. So my feet on the floor are going straight down the lines of the floor. And I want you to bend your knees. And I want you to put your hands out in front of you. And then I am gonna ask you a question. What does it look like I'm doing right now? Yeah, I know Trevor knows. I know Sangram knows. But everybody else, I want you to think about it. We call this horse stance because it looks like you're riding a horse, holding on to the, the reins and bouncing up and down. We're not going to bounce, though. We're going to bend our knees and sit down in a strong stance with our knees pointing forward. So I'm going to turn sideways. You can stay right where you are. When you're in a horse stance, your knees poke forward over your feet. Okay, so let's face forward. Toes forward, knees forward. I want to see the, the uh, open parts of your hand because we're going to make a fist. I'm going to move closer. You can stay where you are. You can see the screen pretty well. To make a proper fist, I'm going to curl my fingers. And my thumbs are sticking out. I need to find a place to put them. My hand is kind of like a box. I'm gonna close the box, and using my thumb, I'm gonna press down on these fingers and lock it shut. 
fingers curled, thumb locked. Then I'm gonna take the pinky part of my hand and touch them together. Then I'm gonna take that same part of my hand and touch it to the side of my body. This is called chamber position. And we're sitting on our horse with our fists in chamber position. Excellent. Now what I want you to do is turn your fists back over and point them at me. This is called double punch. See, because we're punching, but we're doing it with both hands. Good, turn them upside down again. Put the pinky part against your body, chamber. Push them forward, double punch. Notice that when I push my fist forward, they turn over sort of automatically. Turn them again, chamber. Push forward, double punch. Parents, don't do a lot of correcting. We'll get this, I promise. Chamber, double punch. We breathe in when we chamber. We breathe out when we punch. Try saying the words, chamber. Double punch, chamber, double punch, chamber, double punch. Excellent, a little bit faster. Sit down on your horse, pick a spot to aim at in front of you. If you look at my computer screen, you see my head is sitting right on top of my fists. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to aim at a spot in front of you and point your chin right across the front of your fists. Excellent, breathe in, chamber, breathe out, double punch, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Let's count them. When you punch, say one, one, breathe in, two, two, breathe in, three, three, good, breathe in, four, breathe in, five, breathe in, six, breathe in, seven, last one, eight, excellent, I like eight for some reason, it's my favorite number. Leave your right hand out, turn your left hand upside down and stick it on the side of your body, because now we're going to punch with one hand at a time. So I'm punching, and you notice how my head is sitting right on top of my fist. Excellent. We're going to switch hands. So put this one out. Pull this one back. Don't forget to turn it upside down so your pinky touches your body. And that's called switch. So switch hands. Switch. 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 See how my hands turn so my knuckles are pointing straight ahead, straight down the line of my arm. And my pinky finger is touching the side of my body. Switch. 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 Excellent. I know your legs are getting a little tired, but that's okay. Try to sit down on your horse and we're going to do eight more punches. Ready? Switch one. You can count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kia. Huh? Kia. All right, let's take a little break. Attention stands. Take a step towards your camera and find a comfortable spot to sit or stand. And I want to talk for just a second. Karate is about protecting yourself. So it's not really about fighting. It's really about if something were threatening me, no matter what it is, I would want to protect myself. So let's talk about protecting yourself. So a lot of times to protect yourself, you might just hide, right? You would... <laughs> Karate is about protecting yourself in a way that's not hiding. Karate is about learning to use your body in strong ways so that you're not in danger. So. Let's pretend, let's do a little pretend game. What I want you to do is take a step towards the computer and stand like this with your feet close together and bend your knees a little bit. And then I want you to wrap your arms around your body. Uh, just kind of give yourself a hug. Put one of your hands up near your face. And I want you to pretend that you're being picked on or pushed around or threatened. And I want you to use a really whiny baby voice and say, stop it. I didn't hear you, try it again. Stop it. Leave me alone. We call this wimp stance in karate. It's just a way of saying that if you want to be wimpy, get pushed around or threatened, this is really all you have to do. You just kind of act really little and helpless. But karate is not about little and helpless. It's actually about learning to make yourself bigger, stronger, and not helpless. To be able to help yourself. That's the opposite of helpless. To be able to help yourself. So here's what I want you to do now. I want you to pretend that something is in front of you that's dangerous or threatening or uh, someone is in front of you and they're making you feel frightened. And what I want you to do is take two decent steps backwards, one, two, and put your hands up at a stop sign. This is called action stance, but the stop sign is not just with your hands, it's also with your voice. So when you do an action stance, you're going to say, stop it. That was pretty good. Let's try it again. Go back to our regular position, to our first position. 
And when I say go, I want you to take two steps backwards, put that stop sign up, and say stop. Can you do that? Okay, ready? Go. Stop it. Okay, so I've learned that one way to protect myself is to back away and put up my stop sign. That works pretty well. Now I want you to transform that into a defensive stance or defense stance. Make a fist, make a fist, put your elbow and your arm from your right hand in front of your body. This is my shield. This here near my face is my weapon. So I've got one by my chin and one right out front. Bend your knees, point your front foot straight forward at me. This is called defense stance. So let's review all that and go from the beginning. Attention stance. So I was just standing around minding my own business when somebody was picking on me or threatening me or pushing me, it doesn't really matter. And I used my action stance, two steps backwards, hands up and say, stop it. First, you gotta use your voice before you use any karate ever. Before we use kicks or punches or blocks or any of that stuff, we have to start with our voice, which means we have to tell someone, stop what you're doing. I don't like it. Excellent, fantastic. If that works, great, your problem solved. If it doesn't work, if the person is still threatening or bothering or in your space, bending your knees, putting up that shield by closing your fist, bringing your other hand close to your face, and this is called guard. So one hand forward, one hand back, this is called open guard. I'm gonna move a little closer and turn sideways so you can see what I'm doing. Open guard, if I'm facing somebody over here, is a shield in the front, a weapon in the back. The shield protects my body, the weapon is in case I need to hit back. We're gonna try not to hit back, but we're gonna be ready in case. So as I face forward, shield in front, right leg, right hand. It's called the same hand, same foot rule. What if I need to switch feet? Well, then I have to switch hands. Try it. Switch feet. Now my left hand and my left foot are in front. Fantastic. Try again, switch feet. Very good. If you feel like you're strong or balanced, you might need to spread your feet out until they're in the corners of an imaginary box. Switch feet. Very good. Switch feet. Fantastic. But sensei, you're thinking, this is just standing. What if I need to protect myself? What if I actually need to block or keep somebody from hitting me or touching me? So let's walk, talk about blocking. Take your right hand, that's your shield, put it right in front of your body so you can look right over your fist at the computer. Fantastic. We have four blocks. Together they make a shape, but we're gonna do it one step at a time. First thing I need is I wanna pretend that I'm in a house or a fortress. My right hand is the roof on the house. So when I raise my arm above my head, and I turn my hand away from me so I can see the back of my hand, this is called high block. Everybody say high block. Good, try it again. Self-defense stance, my fists are good, my feet are spread out, high block. Excellent. Take that high block and bring it over to the side of your body and that's called inside block. So we got high block over here, above my head, Inside block, that's the wall on my house. So we got a wall. Roof, wall. Now we need another wall on the other side. So bring your arm, arm over. Did you notice I'm using the same arm to do all of these movements? Because this is my shield. So let's do it again. Bend stance, high block. Excellent, roof is up. Can you see under the roof or is it blocking your eyes? Make sure it's not blocking your eyes. Inside block, outside block. And the last one is a little fancy. You gotta reach across your body again, take this hand and touch your shoulder, and then point at the ground. And I guess you probably figured out what that one's called. If this is high block, that is lower block or low block. Good, when you put them all together, then make a shape. Are you ready? Get in your defense stance, put your right hand forward, and we're gonna say the names of the blocks together. High block, inside block, outside block, lower block. Fantastic. Now remember what I said about switching hands and switching feet. If your right foot is in front, you're gonna use your right hand. Let's switch into the other side. So now my left foot is in front, so my left hand is my shield. My right hand is up close to my body. This is my secret weapon. We're gonna use it in a few seconds. Starting off with your front hand. High block, good job. Inside block. Did you get that right? Inside block is sort of like closing a door in front of your body and your arm makes this wall. Try to get it. High block is a roof, inside block is a wall. Your hand should be on the same side of your body as my hand is. Good job. Outside block. Now, both our, now our hands are on this side of our body. Lower block, touch your shoulder, point at the ground. I know that's a little confusing, so we're gonna do it again. 
Self-defense stance. Hide lock. Good job. Inside lock. Outside block. Reach across your body. Then point to the ground. That's lower block. How many was that? Let's count them. High block. One. Inside block. Two. Outside block. Three. Lower block. Four. Switch feet. Other side. We're going to go a little bit faster now. It's okay if you get confused because that's kind of part of karate class is doing your best to catch up. Show me right hand. High block. Good job. Inside block. Outside block. Lower block. Switch feet. Other hand is now going to be the shield. Get it ready. Put your shield out front. High block. Good job. Inside block. I have a wall. Outside block. I have another wall. Don't put it way out here. Put it right here next to your body. I can almost hide behind this wall if I want to. Reach across, touch your shoulder, point at the ground, lower block. Fantastic. One more time, but now we're going to switch feet again. This is my shield, my front hand. This is my weapon. I'm going to put it right down here by my side because we're going to use it in a second. Get your shield ready. Show me high block, inside block, outside block, lower block. Then use your other hand and punch. Yay, we finally got to punch. This is called punch or reverse punch because I'm using my back hand to punch. Hands up. One more time. When you put all the blocks together, high block, inside block, outside block, and lower block, and you add a punch on the end, reverse punch, that's called star block. Anybody want to guess why it's called star block? Take a break for a second. Come a little closer to your computer so you can see real well, okay? And I'm going to tilt mine up just a little bit, okay? So here's my guarding hand. And I want to ask you a question. What shape does my hand make in the air when I do all my blocks together? Well, it's not exactly a star shape, but it's kind of a star shape. High, in, out, and down. That's called star block. So let's do it one more time together. And then I'm going to give you some homework. Are you ready? Attention stance. We're actually going to start way back from the beginning of what we, what we learned. We start off by standing at attention, attention stance. We're feeling threatened or afraid or uh, somebody is hurting us or pushing us, and we're going to start with action stance. So take two steps backwards, put your hands out in that stop sign, and you're going to say, stop it, because we always use our voice before we use blocks or punches or any of that stuff. Got it? Excellent. Defense stance, because now I'm still being hurt, and I can't back up anymore. I'm out of room, so now I have to protect myself. Let's see a star block, starting with your right hand. Roof, high block, wall, inside block, other wall, outside block, touching your shoulder, lower block. Using my other hand to punch, reverse punch. Fantastic. That's called star block. One more time on this side. High block, inside block, outside block, lower block, reverse punch. Excellent. Switch feet. Excellent. We now have... Our left leg forward, so our left hand is back to being our shield. Everybody, put your left hand out front and kind of hide behind your shield here. I can do anything I need to to protect myself. Good job. All right, looking at the camera, working on our star block. High block, excellent. Inside block, fantastic. Outside block, check and make sure it's going straight up and down like a wall. Touch your shoulder, point at the ground, and you have a lower block. And last move, using my other hand. Tap your side so you know which hand you're going to use. Reverse punch, ki. -ai. Fantastic. All right, let's move in a little closer for a second. Okay, so that's fantastic. Uh, at the end of every first karate class, I do something called fast forward rewind. And what that is, is just a quick review of everything we've done. During this part of this uh, live stream class, I don't want you to do any more karate. I want you to actually sit close enough to the screen to be able to see well. Okay, and I want you to follow along with what I'm doing with your voice because we're going to focus on names of things and words. And in the next 30 to 40 seconds, I'm actually going to go straight through every single thing we just did with its name. So you have a quick review of everything we learned today. Are you ready? Okay, you stay where you are. I'm going to do my little fast forward review. So here's your fast forward review of your very first karate class. We started off with attention stance and we said the student code, which is respect, integrity, perseverance, discipline, and pride. We learned how to bow with a fist and a hand. 
and we bowed. Again, you're not doing it, you're watching me. So right now you should be saying, bow. And that's it, just say it. Attention stance. Then we did our warm up, which had a few different movements that we learned the, na learned the name of. One of them where we're sitting on an imaginary chair and I need to get to where you can see me properly. It's not gonna help. We did attention stance and then we put our toe on the ground in front of us and our hands away from our body for balance. And this is called cat stance. When you pick your knee up and you balance on one foot, this is called kick it, cat stance, kicking stance. We also did some exercises and we learned frog position and bridge position where body is straight and flat, holding it off the ground. You can practice that, especially if you're a returning student and you know that you're supposed to be getting better at that. We then we got on horse stance and we learned how to make a proper fist. We learned to curl our fingers, lock our thumb, and put our pinky against the side of our body. From our horse stance, we did double punches, which is punching with same, both hands at the same time. You can practice as many of these as you want, as long as you sit on a horse. Good. Then we did single punches, where one hip punches out and one punches back. And we practiced going back and forth. Then we did action stance, where you're standing just normally and something is dangerous. So I'm taking my two steps backwards, putting up my stop sign, using my voice always. Stop it. If that works, fantastic. You're out of danger, good. The person has stopped bothering you, fantastic. If it doesn't work, we practiced how to defend ourselves from defense stance. Defense stance is knees bent, pointing your toe forward, shield in front, weapon in the back, and we use our shield to block. So we practice star block. High, in, out, and down. Then I punch with my other hand, and that completes the star block. One more time. High, in, out, and down. We also learned the same hand, same foot rule, which is when we switch feet, we also have to switch hands. So practicing switching feet. And if I'm on this side, this is my shield, and that's my star block. Fantastic. So that was pretty much our first karate class. I just want to remind Questions? Uh, right now, these classes are free, so you can try it and see how it goes. I think it's going to go pretty well. Uh, for beginners, it's going to be YouTube only for the next few weeks, and then at some point, we'll start doing interactive Zoom meetings, which don't work as well as YouTube for beginners because uh, it's hard to get a... You notice the room I'm in, I've got this nice lighting. I can stand back from the camera. Not everybody has that, which means I wouldn't be able to see them that well. So um, that's our, our rationale. That's our reason for starting this way. So before we go, we're going to say the student oath because the end of every karate class always ends with the student oath. Trevor, need your help here. Uh, anyone else who's a returning student, going to need you to help out. So let's end class properly. Okay. Uh, parents, some of you I know are going to start asking me about uniforms soon. Be patient. We'll talk about that over the next few weeks. Okay. So we finish standing at attention. And we're going to say the student oath, which is a little different than the student code, but you're still going to repeat it along with me. Are you ready? Attention stance. Student oath. I should hear everyone saying student oath. Good. Two sentences. So you say them after me. First one, strive to be our best. Settle for nothing less. And that is our student oath. Please make a fist and open hand. If someone remembers to ask me next week, I will explain what our vow means. But for now, just put your flat hand on top of your fist. Keep your elbows in so your hands make a, a triangle shape and you bow. I hope you and your families are safe and well at home. I hope you're doing everything that you need to to stay that way. And until next week, this is Sensei Chris signing off. Have a wonderful weekend.